Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and here is my August wrap up. I ended up reading 12 books in August. Excuse the dog crying if you could hear it. She's got to be in her crate when I can't watch her. <laughs> so, um, if you didn't know, I got a puppy. I got a puppy. So, um, that's, that's my puppy crying. Um, anyway, um, if you want to see cute pictures of her, follow me on Instagram because you get to see all of her all over my story. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to talk about the 12 books that I ended up reading in August. I had a great reading month. Um, I have some rereads and like a diverse list of romances. And then also the day that you're seeing this, the 4th of September, it's my birthday. I'm turning 26 today. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I feel weird. I feel weird, but it's okay. It is what it is. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into these books. So the first book that I ended up reading is Nero by S.J. Tilly. I've been hearing about S.J. Tilly for a while now from my friend Victoria over at Victoria's Romance Reads. I'll link her down below. I absolutely adore her and she loves S.J. Tilly. And I'm going to a book signing, I believe it's either later this year or next year. I don't remember which signing she's going to be at, but S.J. Tilly will be at one of the signs I'm going to. And so I wanted to finally read one of her books and I will definitely be picking up another one. This one was a great first read for me. This book starts out with our heroine alone in her apartment. And she has like, I think her patio door open on her apartment. She's a few stories and a man comes in and sneaks into her apartment because he's escaping the police. He's actually a mafia man. That's how they meet. And things kind of spark from there. He actually ends up kind of like stalking her after that point and the heroine just always has an eye out open for him wondering where he is what he's doing if she's crazy for like falling for a man who came through her window at night <laughs> i really enjoyed this one i love the plus size representation the heroine is so confident in herself and the way that she feels and so i adore that so i can't wait to read more romances by esha tilly who have the same type of heroine because i do know she is the queen of writing like amazing like darker books with plus size representation but i also know that people love different books by sj tilly more so i'll definitely be looking into those so leave your recommendations down below please oh and i also would love to mention i was obsessed with how obsessed this man was he was absolutely obsessed with her and i love it okay so tropes you got dirty talk i love me dirty talking man um grumpy sunshine uh mafia romance obsessed hero plus size representation and you have a stalker somewhat. Next, I have two rereads. I reread the last two books in the Horror Kings of Dakar series by Zoe Drew Raven. We actually read this for the Beam Me Up book club, the book club that Tiffany from Tiff Talks Pages and I host. I'll link our live show down below. We talked about these two books and like our opinions and everything in the end of the series. I love rereading these with Tiffany, especially on audio. These audiobooks are freaking fantastic. Um, if you didn't know, this is the fifth and sixth book in the alien romance series that reads like a fantasy so like if you want fantasy romances um but you also want to try alien romances like these are the way to go please um but yeah i can't really talk about these because they're the last two books in a series so they're so stinking good if you want to watch the replay for our live show i will link it down below for you but yeah loved her reading these and i love tiffany next i have forever her duke by scarlett scott this is the first book in her Sorry, my sister's dog is barking now. <laughs> this is her first book in her Duke's Most Wanted series. These are little novellas that are historicals. I love Scarlet Scott. And so when I saw these little novellas on my Libby, I was like, I have to listen to those. Um, so this one is Finn. Finny, come here, baby. So this one is a marriage in trouble romance. So basically these two get married and they haven't seen each other since the wedding, essentially. And um, the hero was her brother's best friend. I think that brother has now passed. Anyway, they haven't seen each other in years. The heroine absolutely hates the hero because like he upped and left her. Oh my gosh, now Winnie's crying. The heroine has planned this elaborate house party with a bunch of guests and guess who shows up but her husband who she hasn't seen in years. So. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, she's crying. <laughs> but you gotta do the, like the cry it out method. I cannot go to her when she's crying like this. I cannot, <laughs> even though I want to, even though I really, really want to. Tropes to this one, you have a historical novella. It's a historical romance. First book in a historical series, Marriage in Trouble. It's a novella on audio and it's a second chance romance. Next, I read Stone Hearts by Amber Kelly. I actually read this for a vlog for my channel members, which will be coming out later on in September. So stay tuned to that. And to the book I'm currently reading will be in that vlog as well, which is, Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin. So stay tuned or stay tuned for that if you're a channel member. And if you are not a channel member, you can join down below. I think it's like $2.99 a month um, to get exclusive content for me. So a little shameless plug there, but that's okay. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, that book will be talked about in that vlog. Next, I have Someone to Watch Over Me by Lisa Kleypas. This is the first book in her Bow Street Runners series. I just would love to read all of Lisa's books. So um, this was one that I owned that I hadn't read yet. And I hadn't read any of these books in the series yet. And I do know that this series isn't everyone's like favorite ever. So I kind of went in with like lower expectations. And this one was definitely interesting so it has the amnesia trope and a lot of the time that trope can be like very hit or miss for me so just putting that out there so basically our heroine gets rescued i think the thames and the hero is a bow street runner he's kind of like a self-made detective a little bit is how you want to put it in common terms <laughs> sorry if you can now hear the ac <laughs> it's a little chaotic here it's okay it would not be a video of mine without it being a little chaotic <laughs> anyway she gets Anyway, she gets rescued from the Thames and she just so happens to be the most notorious courtesan in London and she actually turned him down like I think a year or two ago. And she has no idea who she is, cannot remember anything and she's shocked to realize like all these things that she's done and that she's a courtesan and everything like that. It's their romance. It's a very interesting book. It's not my favorite Lisa Clay best, but I will continue on with the series. Tropes for this one, it's amnesia, bodyguard romance, because he is kind of like her bodyguard acting as her bodyguard and it is obviously a historical romance. Next I have Sick Heart by J.A. Huss. I don't think I would consider this book a romance book. I, I don't think that's what this is called. I just think this is like a, a dark book that has some elements of hooking up in there. <laughs> this is my first J.A. Huss book, so let me know if other J.A. Huss books are like this, but it's the first book in the Sick World series, and this is a pretty dark book, okay? Um, I went in thinking it was gonna be like a dark romance and everything, but it is very, very, very light on the romance, and I just feel like it was very dark without the sprinkle of romance to make it like enjoyable for me. Sorry. This guy, his uh, like fighter name is known as Sick Heart. Um, he basically grew up as a ch from a child as an MMA killer fighter and um, kind of the person who owns him because he's like a fighting slave decides after him to purchase a bunch of other children and have basically child fights where kids kill each other to the de like fight each other to the death and um, there's like wages and stuff like like wagers and blah, oh, it's it's bizarre. Um, so our heroine is actually the daughter kind of like slave to a um, very prominent man in this dark underworld sphere, kind of. And she is basically the hero's prize after a fight that he's won. And he takes her and he's very entranced by her. And he's never really felt like that of any of the, like towards any of the women he's won previously. And she gets introduced to his lifestyle and how he trains and what his world is like being raised from like fighting slavery like it's it's very dark there's like children killing each other so yeah there's a lot going on in here tropes for this one it's a dark romance it's fighting and we have speechless representation both characters don't speak but my the only thing is like there's the speechless representation i don't know if it's good because they're not really speechless and that's all i can really say that's all I can really say. So. I'm kind of sounding like I didn't like this book. I enjoyed it um, and I was definitely sucked in. Like I will admit that I was so sucked in. I needed to know what happened. I listened to this book very quickly and it's very long, but I just don't feel like it was a romance. I feel like I was let down with the ending and like how there was such a lack of romance in it at all. Now one where the romance was actually really cute and sweet and I absolutely loved, but it was also really hot, is Come As You Are by Jess K. Hardy. This is the first book in the Bluebird Basin series. This is like a Gen X romance is how it's marketed. So you have like an older couple, kind of like in their 40s and 50s falling in love with each other, which you very rarely see in a romance book because typically they're like 20s, most of the time 20s, sometimes 30s. The heroine runs this skiing place. Is it like a ski? resort ski place i don't think it's a resort anyway it's a place where people come to ski can you tell them from the south and i don't ski i don't know anything about that <laughs> so anyway it's a place where people go to ski a ski hill ski i have no idea anyway um and she is down on money this guy our hero who runs a kind of like halfway house for men who are getting out of prison and everything um who needed jobs and he basically comes up with a proposition like will only like you only have to pay us like half what you normally pay someone to work there if you just give us these jobs and we'll help and everything and, and so she hires them and she ends up falling in love with the guy who like runs the halfway house kind of like place thing so it's actually really sweet um but also really hot like this man is a like gray-haired rock star muscle tattooed man like, yeah 
duh. <laughs> there are a lot of tropes for this one. Um, you have books with pets. She has this dog that is absolutely obsessed with the hero and is like, I'm with him now, please. <laughs> um, you have Christmas books because this does take place during Christmas time. It has a damaged hero, great banter. It has mental health representation. An older couple, it has a sweet hero, a tatted hero. It has also a winter read and the hero definitely worships the ground the heroine walks on. So he is a worshiping hero for sure. Man, the sun is going away. Give me a second. Is that better? I think that's better. Anyway, another cute one is The Fiction Between Us by Julie Olivia. This was really fun. It's the second book in her Honeywood series, which is an amusement park like series where all these romances take place in an amusement park called Honeywood. And this one is kind of like a hate to love, best friends, brother romance. The heroine's like the princess of the amusement park. She dresses up as the princess and the hero runs security. Uh, but then some like mishap happens where people at the park thinks he's actually Ranger Randy. It's like a character in the books that the park is inspired by. And apparently like Ranger Randy and the princess um, have a like romance. And so they have to fake be like in love and do performances and signings and all this stuff together, like pretending to be their respective like characters that they're in love, even though the heroine like believes that the hero hates her and she like is fully adamant that she hates him and all this stuff. With them pretending to date each other, I think it's kind of like fake dating, um, they end up falling it's actually really cute really sweet i do recommend reading these books in order though tropes you have amusement park best friends sibling it's character driven for sure a chef the hero loves to cook and he thought like getting this role as ranger randy could help like him save up more money to go to culinary school which i love cinnamon roll hero you have cute but hot okay um fake dating golden retriever energy that is totally our hero great banter hate to love it's on kindle limited and it is a workplace romance. Next, I read Faye Touched by Lisa Ray Roman. This is a paranormal romance that I feel like is gray going in blind, for the most part blind. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little bit, okay. Um, so our heroine in here is, let's just say this Faye creature, okay, um, that's very rare. And um, she lives on earth where there are werewolves and vampires and witches and other like magical creatures and stuff. And um, she's in hiding because her kind of like face species is not supposed to exist. And anyway, this book starts out with her saving the life of a vampire queen. And she ends up meeting the vampire queen's, I think like bodyguard, who is a werewolf alpha named Samuel. That's what I'm gonna leave you with. But it's actually a really fun read to go in blind. I didn't know like basically anything going into this. It was a great, enjoyable read. I am currently reading the next book in the series and I'm having a grand old time. The other books in the series, by the way, are all about different couples. So it's like interconnected standalones, you know? Tropes for this one, you have Faded Mates. Hero Falls First, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a paranormal romance, a possessive hero. This man is possessive, which I love. Um, romance with Magic, it's a shifter romance. Touch her and die. Mm -hmm. love the touch her and die and we have a werewolves i did it y'all i finally read my first ally hazelwood book so i picked up love theoretically and i was very surprised on how much i enjoyed this one i really did enjoy it now please bear with me with the summary i am not a stem person whatsoever um so please please be patient with me and give me grace when i'm talking about this book <laughs> okay um because i might just say stuff like science i don't know so anyway um uh, the heroine is trying to work at this university okay and do a bunch of research there as her job because she's not loving her job as a professor and there's kind of someone stuck in her path of getting this job or so she thinks and that's our hero who is actually the older brother to a guy she would fake date um she was a part of this in college to like save up money right um would be hired to fake date guys for certain reasons they need a girlfriend for family function or like a frat party whatever the case may be they need a fake girlfriend like she would be hired to do that as well as some like some other girls like her roommate did the same thing so she was hired as this fake girlfriend but then she ends up seeing his brother older brother at her the job she really wants she's like crap and she is adamant that he hates her and she hates him because he hates her and all this stuff and they're both physicists so that's basically it <laughs> i think i did okay
<laughs> explaining that. I bet there's a bunch of like science, physics, terminology you could add in there that I I am very ignorant on. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I was actually pleasantly surprised with this book. Um, I knew I didn't really want to read The Love Hypothesis because that one just doesn't really appeal to me. And I've heard some eh things about it. So I just decided to start with this one as my first Ellie Hazelwood book. And I actually really enjoyed it. I really liked our hero. The heroine did bug me at times. I think just because of character and personality differences um she very much fit the mold of her personality to what others expected of her um like she could tell that someone she met like really enjoys like funny puns or whatever so she made sure to always say funny puns even though she found them so cringy and she absolutely hates them so like that's like little little things like that like she would basically morph her personality into what other people wanted instead of being her true self which i can see that to a certain degree if you're trying to like get a job you want to make sure that you're approachable and nice and all that jazz but like even like her best friend she would watch movies that she absolutely hates with her best friend because her best friend loves them so much and she would pretend to love them and i'm like i i personally would never do that but again that's me that's me that's a me issue so tropes for this one we have great banter it's grumpy sunshine hero falls first um, romance with disability representation. The heroine has type 1 diabetes. It's a slow burn romance and it is a romance in STEM. The last book that I have for this video is Space for Love by Emily Antoinetti. This was the first book in her Spire Station series. We actually read this, Tiffany and I read this for our Beam Me Up book club for August? August. <laughs> so we picked up this one because we really wanted to read the second book in the series, which we found out is FFM, but we wanted to read the books in order. We were really excited about this one because this one takes place in a space station and we love space station romances. We need more. So if you have any recommendations, leave them down below please and i'll also link down below our live show talking about this book because we did have a lot of thoughts on it um, but this one is basically a space station romance the heroine and hero meet when he's like this holographic creature at this like pleasure simulator thing and um they kind of like fall for each other other the heroine knowing what the hero actually looks like and he wants to keep his physical appearance actually a secret because many people are scared of him and his species and what he looks like there's a lot going into this one so be sure to go check out that live show if you want to see our um reactions and where our thoughts were and our ratings and whatnot for tropes for this one it's on kindle limited um we have plus size representation and it takes place on a space station anyways there you have it those were all the books that i ended up reading in august last month let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting anything else you can leave me oh no let's do a birthday cake emoji anyways <laughs> thank y'all so, so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all